Masu so he was tall. He was the tallest wing in Fiji. And uh, I, I, I watched some of his playing days in the Western Marine team. Oh, he gets the ball from any part of the field, he goes down to score. He'll just go, <coughs> zoop, and the 15 players just stood there. They were running, just like they stood and he, and he scored over. Just like he was going 100 miles per hour, the other ones were going 50 miles per hour. He was that fast. Everybody, when we go to the field, if you have to stride, you stride like him. And when he lifts his leg, it goes to nearly about 10 feet when he runs. <coughs> yeah. And Straight. his knees and his legs are all up there. That means he must be the, the fastest man in the world on 100 meters to be able to beat the horse. It is true. You know, I'm, that's why I say I'm so thankful to you and the family for doing this because nobody has ever done this. And it's an honor and we are grateful. We have with us here, Savannah, my son, second son, and uh, his daughter, Esther. Just Joli to my Langi, my husband, and Aaron Matalulu, my nephew. Uh, Joe Levula is a younger brother of my father, Emosi Levula. They were both also members of the Malayan campaign back then. When he was in Malaya, he did some, he did, they played rugby and they also played athletics. When they played athletics at the time, way back in, you know, I think it was Hitler's time, when Jesse Owens was the first ever uh, Afro-American black to win the Olympics. And he heard that there was, he ran two times when he was in Malaya. He ran two times and broke his record, Jesse Owens' record. And Jesse Owens was, you know, he wanted to go and meet the fellow that, because he heard that this is another uh, black fellow. So he flew from America to to Malaya to go and meet him. And we've got pictures of that, that is kept here with the family. Yeah, this, is, this is Jesse Owens, and that's my uncle Joe Levla. Mm -hmm. And this is Simeli Ranronro, who was a battalion commander or something like that. They were honored because this, this gentleman came to visit. So they took the picture together. They also played rugby with this gentleman too, way back then. He is from Narewa village in Nandi, Joe Levla. Amaya. And his father, Rusia Televula, was Dambuli uh, Nandi. At the time when there was no king, he was running the show for Nandi. For how many years? My grandfather, <coughs> Rusia Televula, their dad, was a member of the French Legion. <laughs> Way back in World War One, with Ratusukuna. 
So he brought, most of his time and his training career, he did it on Denaro Island. He did it on Denaro Island, so that's before hotels and things. He, because we had farms in, uh, we planted, we actually planted rice in Denaro Island. And uh, the 1950s and 60s square. And then, uh, and then when he was, you know, when he, he, he grew up with, with a very strict father. They grew up with a very strict father. During the Malayan campaign, the, their mom was crying, telling the father, the, my grandfather, asking him, please just allow one of them to go and one of them to stay. If, you know, if something happens to them, I, at least I still have one. No, we have to abide by the... He was a very strict gentleman. So both of them went, but both of them came back alive. They did what they did and then they came back. And then he co continued on with his uh, rugby. In uh, 19, early 19, in 1960s, they toured New Zealand and Australia. And the impact of the tour for Australia was really good according to what we said about it. They made an impact in that sort of boosted the Australian rugby. <clears throat> then at the time there was a scout from England that saw them play. Then as soon after that when they returned to Fiji, this gentleman followed them to Fiji. And then he came and made arrangements with them to, to go to to England to play rugby league. And they became the first Fijians ever to play rugby league. 1961 was when they went to to, to England. So how old were they when they first uh, went? They would be in their 20s. They would be in their twenties when they were. He was, you know, like he did rugby when he was nineteen. Like his prime was at the age of late, you know. The, he was nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Yeah. And then he stayed there, played rugby league, and then they lived there. Did, did he write back saying that he's enjoying it in England, or he's homesick? Or? Uh, they, they, were, they enjoyed England so much. They enjoyed England so much. And then in, uh, <coughs> when he passed away, we made arrangements to bring his body back to be buried. Yeah, can you tell us the story about how you made the arrangements? Uh, because it's a really amazing um, thing that does. I am. I am. I, there's one. <clears throat> there's one person that I owe this. Uh, you know, my gratitude to, and that was and that is Andrew Thompson. He was a manager, here and he used to play rugby, and he was a great follower of my uncle, and. Um, he called me in his office and he said, do you want to bring your father, your uncle's body to Fiji or not? And I said, I want to bring his body back to Fiji, but I didn't have the finance. Because I already made, you know, inquiries about it and it was a lot. And he said, okay, I'll help you. So he helped us by securing a loan for us to to bring his body back to pay for the uh, tra the plane and all those, mm -hmm. and I always owe it to this gentleman. And he's a great friend. We still, we still. He contacts me when he comes to Fiji, but right now he's somewhere in Europe. You know, so. and um, because of history, way this gentleman Andrew Thompson. His father was one of the gentlemen that helped Fiji to where it is now. And I, you know, for him to do this, it was really an honor for me. 
and I thank him. And I want, you know, I don't want to, to, to hide his name and what he did for us. You know, and I, I owe that fellow a lot. Because he was a real gentleman. At the time that we needed somebody, he came in and made it possible for us to bring the body back to Fiji. He was the general manager of he was the general manager yeah, of the region of Fiji. That's where you were working? Yes. The region of Fiji. Okay, I'll just add a little bit more about him. Sure. Because he had a strict uh, father. Yeah. The father always give, give him assignments. He made an assignment for him to complete. What they used to do at the time was they, they had horses. They was, there was my uncle, what and when him. They would uh, complete the assignment and then come to Narewa to, Narewa to train. But when they could not complete that, they had to do it and do the training on the on the ground, on the beach, on Denaro Beach. That was when we had the beach. Now they don't know, no more beach there. They would run there. My, my uncle was a forward. Pioneers of Fiji Rugby League. That's my uncle that's still in England, what in Rio. When he... When they could not complete the thing, oh, they used to run because he was in the forward and he was in the back. He always lose and with a big gap. So what he told him, you know, every time I run, you know, how about if I go in the, on the horse and you run, so that... So he rode the horse and he ran. You know, so and raced. then they race on the beach. So, am I correct in understanding? So, there was someone on a horse yes. Yes. running, and Him. Joe Levula was trying to chase the horse. They, no, they raced. They raced together. They raced like on your marks. They had a race. They Joe Levula and uh, they were they were riding the horse. Oh, okay. Yes. He rode the horse. Right, he rode the horse on race. But both of them. Yeah. No. So, Joe Levula was on foot. On foot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one person on a horse, one person on foot. Yeah. Right. Oh, Johnny Bula was on foot, yeah. but Andrew was on the horse. And he beat the horse. And he beat the horse. He beat the horse. At the beach. <coughs> he and Denaro Island, because we live there. We used to live on Denaro Island. That's an awesome story. Now, when you really come to think of it, for that record that Jesse Owens in the 100 meters record for the world, that means he must be the, the fastest man in the world on 100 meters to be able to beat the horse. It is true. This is, you know, I'm, that's why I say I'm so thankful to you and the family for doing this. Because nobody has ever done this. And it's an honor and we are grateful to it's, you, Ryan. It's, it's, it's really not about us, it's about him and your family. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. you know, but the can, time can, that you've taken off to do this, because nobody's ever done that, not, not even PG Rugby <laughs> has ever done this. And he's supposed to be the original Flying Fijian. Can, can you tell us uh, about what he was as a person outside of rugby? Like, what did he like? What, do you like to joke and was he a favorite mm. story? Oh. Or, or like, ah, uh, was the joker. Mm. He was um, a very, hum very humorous person. Mm. Both him and the, uh, my father, both of them. You know, they can say something and everybody burst out laughing. He you likes know? his cover. Most of the times you would mix the cover, yeah. drink the cover, yeah. and then straight away you jump onto the rugby field <laughs> and play. Yeah. <laughs> and you would still cover up on the rugby field. Wow. Yes. He was uh, gifted, talented. He was gifted. He was blessed with a gift from God. There's no other. No other things that we can say but to thank the Lord.
was there like specific food that he liked to eat? So. <laughs> he was not very particular about you know about food. Whatever was he was not a fussy person. He was not no, a fussy no, person. No. Whatever was prepared right, for him, you. he was he mm -hmm. accepted. The blessing that we we got from all this, our great great grandfather when. Christianity was brought into <coughs> Fiji. <coughs> Our grandfather, you know, like they used to say, Ratu Nakumbao arrived on the shore of Denara. <coughs> At that time, way back, my great 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 grandfather, if you go down from here, as you go, there's a <coughs> there's a burial ground on your left by you know with the pond in the front. That used to be an old village where my grandfather used to live. He, he, when they accepted Christianity, they... Mm. The, the Christianity, okay, he, <coughs> Nabula went and received it from there, and he gave it to him because Nabula was fighting. About two years ago, they came. They came because the, the, the Methodist... Uh, the Methodist Church... Uh, what you call it? preacher that they were training to be preachers <coughs> there was a busload that came when they did the research and the research and then they said this all this gentleman here we check his record he's, he's got uh, families that are alive in Narewa we want to go and visit them they he was the one that kept this Christian gift that was brought in by Vakumbau here and was kept in there by our great great grandfather. And this thing that happens in the family the blessings from we return the honor and the glory to be his and his alone. Because, because of our great grandfather's exception accepting Christianity, yeah. the blessings uh, flow down to the family. And uh, a good example is uh, my grand uncle John Levula, and before him, uh, my great grand uh, father Taihusi Ate Levula. He had so many achievements. In my the, grandfather, he was the only Nandi boy <coughs> at that time, Nandi man, to go to the First World War with Ratsukuna. With Ratsukuna. The British could not accept them probably because of the limited number of Fijians. At the time, they wanted to nudge and near, not to encourage them to go to war. So they went and joined the French Legion because they were already on the, you know? They went on and joined the French Legion. He had a big picture of, of, the, of my grandfather in our house, but during the flood and the thing moving around and all, we lost it. Do, do you have anything that belonged to him still? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we have to go and ask uh, mm -hmm. mom's younger brother in uh, the village yeah. at their house. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Maybe. So, so the house is still there? Yes. yes. Oh, wow, what a huge. It's still there. It's an honor to. Mom's younger brother is yes. mm -hmm. at the house. We're we going to the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, that's why I said you take us this one. I'm honored, yes. but I will direct it to the house. We will have some more stories for you. <laughs> that is, uh, so when you think about him, what is the first thought that comes in your mind? <laughs> when I think about, you know, that's why I'm, I'm emotional that somebody who's not a member of the, you know, the, apart from the family, mm -hmm. a member of the Fiji Rugby Union, mm -hmm. to do what you have done, it is, is an honor. And it's really, it has really touched my heart for somebody to do this for him. It's an honor for us. Mm -hmm. And we thank you. We thank you so much. We thank the family. Thank you. Anything else any, you want to add? Ronnie. <laughs> mm. I think uh, 
Big Joe was a uh, big influence in in the all of Nemi through sports. Through him, the Nandi rugby rose to a very, very big age. Uh, through his uh, style of play, the way he ran, he motivated most of the rugby players all over Nandi, starting from Sambeto, Saunaka, Nawaka, Nakabu, Nabodi, na Motomoto, Narewa, Sikituru, uh, Moala, and Korobuchi. We... Nani uh, is one of the champions. I uh, came from the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, 90s through his efforts. And uh, everybody, when we go to the field, if you have to stride, you stride like him. And when he lifts his leg, it goes to nearly about 10 feet when he runs. <coughs> yeah. And Straight. his knees and his legs are all up there. More higher than the horses when he runs. In your experience, have you seen any player since him run like him? Or anyone who comes close? Come close? Mm -hmm. I think it's probably me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I tried to run like him, but I couldn't go up of it. Uh, I, I don't want He was tall. He was the tallest wing in Fiji. And uh, I, I, I watched some of his playing days in the Western Marine team. Oh, he gets the ball from any part of the field, he goes down to score. He'll just go, <coughs> zoop, and the 15 players just stood there. Mm -hmm. They were running, <coughs> just like they stood and he, and he scored over. Just like he was going 100 miles per hour, the other ones were going 50 miles per hour. <laughs> he was there fast. Yeah, uh, yeah, and... Uh, I paid tribute to him to, he was a, a very, very close friend with me um, when he used to play for Western Marine at the 90 district school. He used to send me out to go and get the bottled water from the 90 district school tap. And sometimes he threw his boot, his rugby boots to me to clean it. And I think, I had, uh, from doing that, I became something too in the uh, sports field. Maybe not in rugby, but I was good in soccer. I went up to represent Fiji in soccer and coach and uh, also coach Fiji team uh, through this legend man. My, my father-in-law, Yes, and uh, I paid three between. I really thank him for what he did to the lives of all the rugby rugby players in the nation. Maybe, maybe Serevi, yes. Serevi had his time in seven, but in 15, he was unbeatable. That's the story about Big Joe. Thank you. The matter. Mia Satambaro Konangona. Kala Isoka Warokoro Kotakina, Tony and Ryan of Uniangona. Na Little Sevu Sevuna, Ryan Family, the Tokotan Makendi Naguna Watu. The Rumatala Mimunia will make it to what I saw. Anu mende ni atu obiti, aru sa no mena kai, aru no mena figi rugby unen. Elal ni anak itu tu ke tau tu ke, anda ke emosi biru, aru la meni kau meru la mesir usiu, aru sa nambu cial anak itu tu tu ke mekila cio mura mura, akila cio akila yo mura mura ina rata nalin ruwa bandia wakila ya.
some rugby videos and uh, we didn't realize the impact that it will have and so we are just amateurs we like not professionals and then the next thing we knew everyone's watching our videos it's just short videos saying congratulations to the Fiji team <laughs> hope you do well and we really appreciate Jerry Chuai how you're playing or and so on and uh, we didn't realize that all the rugby players they've, themselves, they've been watching the videos. And so uh, when, uh, when we went to uh, visit the Fiji team uh, in December, just a few weeks ago, they all stopped their training and they came and said hello to him and uh, take photos with him. And uh, even the coach came and said uh, when they were in uh, Dubai and Cape Town, they watched uh, his videos and they really up uplift them. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, yeah, we started doing some uh, more research. And then uh, we discovered that Joe Littler was the original yeah. flying Fijian. And uh, a lot of the success of the Fiji team and the reason why the Fiji team is named the Flying Fijians is because of him. Yeah. And then I started doing some research and then we discovered that there's very little information, public information about uh, his life. Um, to the fact that many people who follow rugby, they don't even know that uh, he's very here in Fiji. Um, even uh, like a lot of websites, they've got information that's completely wrong. Mm. So uh, we decided to do was take uh, time out to come and uh, speak to uh, everyone and maybe make a video and uh, just to appreciate his life and uh, <coughs> make sure his memory carries on. <laughs> that, that, that is our purpose. Uh, uh, my big apologies about him, all his teeth are coming up, his front teeth is almost <laughs> coming up, so he is in a bad mood <laughs> because of that. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your experience at FRU when you went to inquire about the Julia Um Like uh, all the videos that we make are positive videos. We don't like to say anything negative about it in your hand. <laughs> um, uh, the Fiji Rugby Union is, like, this is my opinion, I could be completely wrong. They they don't have much resources and so there is no one who's collecting information about old rugby players like there's no official room or official person or like the records are not kept so if you went to FRU and you asked 
for any player. Like how many times did they play for Fiji? No information. Um, how many tries they scored when their career started, when their career ended? There's no information there. Um, and I went to the National Archives. They've got no, inf I mean, they've got a few magazines that you can buy in the shop. That, that's all they have and they said that now no one collects information and also the museum has got nothing and so, quite sad, yeah, so there's uh, given the importance of rugby to Fiji there's uh, no one's uh, doing it and uh, we are not professionals but at least if we try to do something like you know people who are professional they'll come and say oh yes we can carry on so someone has to start and, that's us, <laughs> and so we, we are very mindful that uh, yeah, this is a very big thing, and so we want to capture everything and uh, be, uh, be as respectful and uh, portray him positively. And <laughs> so that is our element, and we do it because we love it. We're not earning any money or anything from making these uh, videos. Well, when I was a university student, uh, this is in the 90s, uh, when I went to watch a rugby at the National Stadium, I was the only Indian person there, and uh, I didn't have much money, so I'd sit in the, on the embankment, and uh, every time I went to watch rugby, someone would come and tap me on the shoulder and say, you sure you're at the right place? Um, have you escaped from St. Giles? Or <laughs> and then uh, I think after a few months people began to recognize me and someone would always, if it rained, someone would come and sit underneath me with an umbrella <laughs> or buy me barbecue. And <laughs> so, yeah. Nowadays I've been told that everyone goes and watches rugby. <laughs> things have changed. <laughs> I, I've always enjoyed watching rugby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now the Indians are more passionate about rugby than the uh, Turkey. <laughs> uh, the one really interesting <laughs> thing I learned uh, just last week, uh, speaking to Dr. Tausese. Tausese. Tausese, sorry. Um, what he told me, this was a complete shock to me, that uh, football in Fiji soccer, they've got way more money than rugby. And so I was, oh, really? Okay. You know, the people who have got the money, they should be supporting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. yeah. And uh, I mean, personally speaking, I could be completely wrong. Um, like, they're always complaining they don't have enough money, enough sponsorship. Like, you just have to stand on the side of the road and you see so many expensive cars going past. So there is money in the country, except uh, the management. Mm -hmm. So I don't know <laughs> what's happening. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's all the negative side, the positive is we're doing something positive and yes. <laughs> yeah, they can money if we so they were always in contract, eh? yeah. money yeah. all over all over the world. Eh? Mm. Like uh, it was recently in the news that uh, the super rugby uh, Fiji was going to have a super rugby team. Yes. And then it did not happen because they didn't have enough money. Yeah. And it wasn't a huge money, it was I think some millions of dollars. Like if you look at the amount of money Fiji as a whole earns, it should be affordable. <laughs> like there, there is enough money in the country <coughs> to make that happen, except something is not happening somewhere for that money to be used. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's my personal opinion. <laughs> so this is where Taicho was brought up. Taicho, we all say Taicho because Tai in, in Fiji means grand, grand girl, grand uncle. Taicho is Taicho Levula, this is where he was brought up. The old foundation was that old. You know, same, same, this uh, is the town. This way is brought Can I just change the camera angle to around this way? You used to train in uh, this ground. Okay. 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 Okay.
Do you have any questions? Or, uh... my, my knowledge is so less that I <coughs> don't even know where to start. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's basically what you want to share and what you want the people to know that they don't know right now and uh, like oh, what does he mean to your family and how do you celebrate his success and what, what do you wish yeah. <laughs> yeah I think mom covered most of uh, most part of his life except that uh, so this is a solid place this is where he was brought up and on the ground there is where I used to train. So like right here in front? Yes. Yeah, right there in front. Yeah. yeah. This is where uh, he first started his training. So afterwards I'll take a, a yes. video of that place and video then place. I, I can cut the, like yes. while you're talking and then put that in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Airport. Uh, 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 with the the yeah. 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 This was story uh, the distance from here to the to the airport. He boiled the the kettle, the kettle, the kettle. Yeah. And then he ran from here to Right to the airport. Right to the airport and came back just in time for for the hot water to boil. To boil. She was there fast. So what distance do you think that was? Oh, that's quite a distance. Because before there was a um, railway. Railway yeah. So you where, the railway new, where the new road is? Where the new road is. And there used to be a railway. They ran all the way right up to the airport. That's how fast this one he was. So imagine he beat the horse. So yeah. he started to boil the uh, cold water. He ran from here to the airport, came back just in time for it to boil hot water. Mm -hmm. I, I thought Shirley mentioned that uh, one of uh, the young children is named after him. It's uh, her, her son. Her son. Yes, her son. So uh, th that means that everyone still appreciates. Uh, yes. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> he used to walk in Suva. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was dedicated to playing for Nandi. But he never, I think only played once for Suva. Walk in Suva, but always come to Nandi to play for Nandi. Where did he work? Uh, I'm in the military. Oh, so he was a soldier? Yeah. yeah. He was a soldier. Oh, yes, that's why he went to yeah. 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 He was, uh, his primary education was at... He was Gurkuli. Probably in Lotoka. Gurkul. One Indian school in Lotoka. Yes. So how did he travel? He went by bus Maybe by the train. Train? Sugar train. Because there were free rides. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I assume. Yeah. Could be one of the mode of travel. Buses, the train. Those are cane, uh, cane trains. Yeah. You would go on that. From Gurkhul Primary, then he went to Rastanda Live School. Opposite. Opposite. Oh, Pandit Vishnu Dev. University of Fiji. That Gurkul Primary School. That's where his primary school is. So he went to an Indian school. So he went to an Indian school. 
and, and then high school? High school. This one. I'll give it to you. Okay. Uh, at uh, Ratkonda Williams School. So that's in all the way. At Tailem. So, so he was a boarding student. Then. Yes, he was a boarding student. And I wonder if they have some information about him there because they've got records and so on. Maybe some older citizens of the village might know more stories about him. <laughs> And that's Oris in Dawai, Fiji captain. Uh, both from Narewa village and both were pioneers of uh, rugby league two in Fiji. They both played for Rochdale Hornets. Cousins. And uh, these and other. The these are the siblings. The eldest is Emoshi Levula. And uh, Iliseva, Masao Levula, that's Shelly's grandmother. And then uh, Rachelly, Tindraki Levula, and the youngest, Joe Levula. That's him. William. Oh. Can you take one of you? This is very important. Can you read? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So that, that is when they sign? Yeah, yeah. the agreement. When they sign to go to the do, do you have the agreement? Do you have the agreement itself? Is it here? Or? No, no, only the, only only the photo. Only the yeah. So, so that is the bure that uh, you lived yes. in? Fijian bure that they used to live But now we... Uh, We're all living in concrete yeah, houses. That's the bure. <laughs> So we get, we get here in our family house like nearly every Christmas, every time just to remembrance and continue the bond that they had with each other. So yeah, so they were really close, so they passed it on to all of us, teaching us and even our children and children to come. The closure. Oh. So in our family we have so many colors. Very bright colors in our family. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Levula, uh, big brother, Emo Silevula, the dead, Latusia Levula, and the mom, Auntie Marida Levula. <laughs>